Hello and welcome to the Total Entertainment Podcast with me, Paul Collis, and today we're going to take a look, take a look at supporting artists Rosie Plain and Block Party. Right, so let's take a look at what we can find about Rosie Plain. Rosie Plain was born in Roseland, Leyden in Winchester, England in 1986. In, 19, in 2006 she moved to Bristol to study art and she participated in the Cleaner Records group there. She recorded two records, published by King Kerost's Fence Records inside inside over here in 2008 and joined sometimes unjoined in 2012 in 2012 she moved to london in november 2012 she recorded a live session for lauren levine's bbc radio 6 music show in 2015 plain released a new album friend followed by followed in 2016 by a companion album of remixes unreleased tracks and radio sessions friend of a friend in 2019 she released what a boat What's a boost? And in 2020, what a remix? She's a member of This Is the Kit and regularly contributes to the music of her friends, including Rachel Dad, Francois, and the Atlas Mountains, and Bamboo, with whom she has performed live on a number of occasions in 2016. Plain has toured with the likes of Deven- Devendra Banhart and Katie Tunstall, as well as performed at as well as performing at Green Man Festival and End of the Road Festival. Her discography is Inside Over Here in 2008, Joined Sometimes Unjoined Fence Records in 2012, Friend Lost Map Records in 2015, Friend of a Friend Lost Map Records 2016, What a Boost Memphis Industries 2019, What a Remix in 2020 and Prize in 2023. Block Party, an English rock band composed of Ely Okoroki on lead vocals, rhythm guitar, keyboards and sampler, Russell Lissack on lead guitar, keyboards, Justin Harris bass, guitar, keyboard, saxophones, backing vocals and Louise Bartle on drums, percussion. Former members are Matt Tong and Gordon Mokes who left the band in 2013 and 2015 respectively. Their brand of music, whilst rooted in rock, retains elements of other genres such as electronica and house music. The band was formed at the 1999 Reading Festival by Okoki and Lissak and went through a variety of names before settling on, before settling on Block Party in 2003. Mike's joined the band after answering an advert in Enemy magazine whilst Tong was picked via an audition. Block Party got their break by giving BBC Radio 1 DJ Steve Lamarck and Franz Ferdinand's lead singer Alex Capranos a copy of the demo She's Hearing Voices. In February 2005, the band released a debut album, Silent Alarm, which was critically acclaimed and was named Indie Album of the Year in 2006, Plug Awards and Enemy Album of the Year for both, which both honour indie music. That year, the record was also certified platinum in Britain, and the band built on this success in 2007 with, with the release of their second studio album, A Weekend in the City, which reached a peak of number two in UK albums charts and number 12 on the Billboard 200. In August 2008, Block Party released their third studio record, Intimacy, which entered the UK albums charts at number eight and number 18 on the Billboard 200. The band went on hiatus in October 2009 to focus on side projects. They reunited in September 2011 and shortly thereafter released their fourth album, Four, which entered the UK albums chart at number three. In 2013, Block Party released their third EP titled Next Wave Sessions. In August, the band then began an indefinite hiatus to continue with their respective side projects. The band's fifth studio album, Hymns, was the first to involve Harris and Bartle was released into, in, on the 29th of January 2016. The sixth studio album, Alpha Games, was released on the 29th of April in 2022. Block Party have sold over 3 million albums worldwide. Right, so now we've heard about the bands and now we've seen about the setup. Let's get on to the actual show reports. So, Rosie Plain. Well, from start to finish, Rosie Plain had a uh, state had a static wash of lights via the LX1 profile units backlighting her. The lights were uh, focused into a narrow beam and had a uh, breakup gobo in every song. And every song had a different colour combination. And sometimes they uh, mix it up with a uh, slight chase which was in time to the uh, actual beat. Sound wise it wasn't loud but we had crisp clarity. We had the 22 carats gold standard of clarity and it was a nice beautiful mix there which um, 
just had a real good sound to it fully in depth full bodied and you could hear every instrument and vocal perfectly i thought that rosie plain was a unique artist i mean you'd find it hard to find a similar artist with uh, upbeat and trippy music well one could even go as far as saying that her unique style was a little bit lo-fi deliberately lo-fi and it just had a nice sound to it really really pleasing to the ears and uh, no one else no other uh, no other artist that i've ever heard would come close to that weird weird but soothing sound that she had i thoroughly enjoyed it and also would would like to think that you'd hear uh, a lot of um Ra- that you'd hear a lot of rosy plain on uh, no sleep radio yeah, you know, something that will help chill you out. So you'd come back from work late, late at night. You put some uh, chilled out beats on to help settle you down, switch your brain off from the from a long night working. If you're do, if you're working nights, that is. And it, and her music was just nice. You could definitely, definitely shut down, you shut down your brain with that nice, nice sound that she had come out with. I mean, even if you were, uh, and even if you were, were at home and you couldn't sleep, and you're reading your book at night in bed, Rosie Plain would be nice to uh, just listen to whilst you're reading, or even studying to as well. And I also, I also felt that the audience received Rosie Plain very well, very well. They were clapping, they were applauding. They some were some people were dancing along to it, and I would guarantee you that not many people would have heard much about Rosie Plain until tonight. And they all they all enjoyed her. And I also feel that this isn't the last time we've heard from Rosie Plain. Now, Block Party, they had a few more lights from Rosie Plain. This is because they needed them for their high energetic sets and high octane set. And they had use of uh, all the LED profiles on LX1 and uh, 2, as well as the front of house uh, profiles. They also had some uh, LED truss trims on LX1 as well. So every song used the same lights with different colour combinations and different chase patterns, which were perfectly timed to the music. Sometimes they were uh, ballyhooing into the audience, sometimes they were just making shapes on the stage. But it was great. It was nice to look look at. It was nice to look at and this was organised flash and trash. It wasn't random. It was all pre-planned, programmed perfectly and it looked great. Now sound wise, Block Party were louder than Rosie Plain and the sound engineer managed to maintain a 22 karat clarity with extra crispness to uh, add more body to the sound and it was amazing sound you couldn't ask for a better sound engineer in my opinion he did his job perfectly and it sounded great it's definitely cd quality and on a live performance as i said already block party had an amazing uh, an energetic performance and this rubbed off on the audience as there were lots of people dancing and bouncing in time to the tunes after every song they had a huge applause and scream especially when they played their biggest numbers block party did very well and i would pay money to see them headline their own tour because they were amazing and this is the first time i've actually heard a block party song and uh, they were great to listen to and they were great to watch and I would definitely add them onto my summer barbecue uh, playlist they were great and I definitely definitely want to see and hear more of Block Party thank you for listening to today's podcast if you've enjoyed today's podcast please hit like subscribe and share and we should catch you next time bye for now